Welcome back everybody to a review that we are very excited about for a few reasons. First of which, we have never reviewed a wheat beer before, Alessandro. This is the very first time, and I am a big fan of wheat beers, so this one is gonna be great. And this is probably one of the best wheat beers that you can get. It is also the oldest brewery in the world, disputedly. Otto I, the Bishop of Freising, I should say, back in the year 1040, first gave the abbey on which the brewery originally stood the right, the legal right to brew beer, according to a document that they unearthed. So it dates all the way back to 1040, good old Otto I, giving them that wonderful ability to brew this delicious beer that we know today. What do you know about this beer? Is there anything that I should know or our audience should know going into it before we start the review? Well, there, there's so many things we could talk about, like about the brewery yeah. and the beer, but I agree with you, my friend, this is a delicious beer. So uh, if you haven't, yeah, if you haven't tried it, I would say it, it's a must. Uh, but speaking specifically about the history, I mean, uh, uh, the we're not gonna get too much into the style, but this, uh, this brewery in particular, uh, that now is a brewery, but it started as a monastery, as Joe just explained, has like so many fun, facts throughout the history. Maybe one day we can uh, we can uh, get into them in a little bit more detail. But one thing that I wanted to bring up now is that many times the monastery and the brewery were completely like destroyed for different reasons. But every time they were rebuilt and multiple times throughout the almost thousand years of history, uh, just as a, you know, as a testament to the fact that beer like you can try and destroy it, but it's always going to come back and it's going to come back stronger. And here we are today drinking. You can't kill beer. You can't kill beer. It's going to constantly come back and rebuild itself. Do you know how it was destroyed each time? Was it a similar way where there are just like random beer fires that would start constantly? <laughs> There's you now many different reasons like uh, for what I could uh, collect. Like one time it was destroyed uh, because of an invasion and actually multiple times. Uh, one yeah. time there was an, earth, an earthquake, uh, one time abandoned because of the plague. Like, so there, there's many different like events. Wow. There is so yeah. many fun stories that could be interesting one day to unearth and uh, <laughs> get a little bit more into. So quick introduction to this. Like we mentioned, it is a wheat beer. We're not going to go too much into the details of what a wheat beer is just yet. If you are curious, we do have an Inside the Brackets episode we'll link to down below. Uh, if you're watching this review on the day it comes out, it'll be coming tomorrow. So keep an eye open for that. Well, you'll learn all about wheat beer, everything you need to know. For now, that's all you need to know. We got a wheat beer on our hands. It's looking at a 5.4% ABV. It's nice and smooth. In the summer, this is the kind of beer that I love to just put like a big orange wedge into. I think it adds a real nice something to it. Kind of like you would with a whole garden per se, which is maybe in the same style. This is my favorite though. I really, really love this one. Want to start with the aroma? I think we should, my friend. Let's get into Let's it. I've been it. waiting all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. It is beer time. Beer time. Beer o'clock. Oh, yeah. Beer o'clock. It's the best time. Beautiful. It's the best o'clock. Okay. My favorite of the o'clocks. Look at that. Nice head. Look at that, man. I've got the, uh, the hyphen visor glass here. Whoa, look at that. You're all fancy mm -hmm. there. Awesome. I'm going with the regular, but uh, I know that the heavy ice and glass like is, is the right glass to drink this beer. For this type of beer, it is supposedly the right glass to drink with. I've abandoned my Belgian beer glass that I use for tasting for this one. But the good thing about these glasses is that they still do come to a point at the top. So it still is good for trapping in that aroma and I can still fit my big nose in there. <laughs> and I can still get all the delicious aromas from it. So it's perfectly fine. And it just looks really damn cool. I think so. My friend, I will let you get started. I can smell it already, man. As soon as oh, I yeah. pop the cap on this yeah. one, those aromas just <laughs> come right out. Oh my, like, this is so delicious already from the aroma. aroma. I know, right? The, the main and first thing I smell is that characteristic banana kind of uh, um, fruity flavor. Mm -hmm. And I do get a very pungent but in a pleasant way that comes through and cuts through kind of a, a clove character spicy clove uh 
And yeah, it's just so nicely balanced and inviting. It's almost, almost citrusy. Don't, I don't want to say citrus, but like it has a little bit yeah. of that character to me. I don't know, it recalls that. As far as aroma go, for a wheat beer specifically, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So I know I've been, you know, lately starting a little high, but it, this is inviting me right there. So I'm going to go with the three on three on this. I'm, I can't wait to get into the glass. <laughs> You're starting high because you're just excited about the beers. It's possible. It's, totally, it's, it's possible. It's totally understandable, man. We get ourselves all revved up. We're all ready to go. We get all hyped up. And we get really excited because we get to drink all these delicious beers together and talk about it much. That's Things true. could not be better. Um, you know what? I'm going to agree with you on that. This is a three-on-three -three aroma for me as well. When it comes to a wheat beer, there's nothing more that you can want. The banana that you mentioned is really, really, really dominant. I kind of associate wheat beers with that banana aroma yeah. that is really common for a reason uh, like you said there isn't really too much citrus on it which i think is why extra citrus elements pair really well with it so if you are going to be serving this in a glass to cut off a slice of orange and pour it in it pairs really well with that kind of fruity banana so that banana is super strong you do get some of that cloveness the cloveness you get some of the cloves the cloveness should be a cloveness word. it's a nice word i think if it doesn't it exist nice yet we yeah. should start using it i love it the cloveness <laughs> yeah. it's a three on three it's plain and simple it is a delicious aroma aside from that there's not much else but you know what it doesn't need much else it's really balanced it's inviting makes you want to take a sip and speaking of sips i think we need to get right in there after our three on three aromas yeah and we need to take a little sip and see what we think Cheers, my friend. Cheers. No. Oh, yeah. See, now I know why they kept rebuilding after all the plagues and the invasions. There's a reason. Because if the locals, if the locals of Freising, and I'm sure I'm butchering this, I'm thinking it's not freezing, but Freising. Let's say it's Freising. Freising. If the locals of Freising, Germany, were deprived of this delicious wheat beer for any extended period of time, I would riot. If I was living in those days, I would light a pitchfork on fire, <laughs> I would storm the abbey, and I would demand they get right back to work brewing this beer, which I'm sure is what happened. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the people of the town themselves were carrying stones <laughs> to rebuild the abbey. Get back to work. Let's get it ready to go. I mean, beer, beer, we need more beer. <laughs> yeah, I can see, I can see the scene. Like, absolutely, you're right. Like, I mean, totally. right after the set, I would think so. Here. Wow. Uh, where to start, really? Um, where to start? Yeah. You do get in, on this beer. Like, it's it's so many things happening. I, I got to take another sip because uh, I don't want to forget. Forget. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Well done, my friend. This is so refreshing. Oh yeah. It's such a good beer. It's all over the place, but in a, in a very nice way. So you get initial acidity that resembles again that uh, citrus note that it's not exactly there, but you, you can almost know, like, right? convince yourself that it's there. And yet uh, it mimics the citrus flavor so well. And then it has like this uh, sweetness uh, that is just at the beginning transitions into uh, a very pleasant coating palette feeling that I don't want to talk too much about because it's more mouthfeel. But then you have that hop aroma that is very gentle and and just there to balance out the other elements so it doesn't get like too overly sweet. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's it's so good and, and balanced in all those elements uh, that it makes you feel like it just, you take a sip and it's immediately gone, uh, but it leaves yeah. you for craving for more for a second sip. So. I mean, when this happens for me, it's again like sign of greatness. So three on three here for me as well on the taste. So the banana is the first thing I get. I do taste a little bit of that bitterness. You taste the hops, which I love. I think this is such a delicious balance of that fruity element and the hops. You know, when we say you almost taste the citrus, but you don't, I think that's one of the reasons why I love this so much. This plays with that. It hints at citrus but it doesn't give you citrus, which is why I think I really like it. There's a little bit of a trick there. The hops, the bitterness from the hops combined with the cloves and the banana, it almost mimics this kind of fruity mixture of banana and citrus, but it's not quite there, so it's not too much. It's not overpowering. The taste is really nice and smooth and balanced, and wow, it is delicious. You know what, as far as wheat beers go, um, I, I don't 
I've had a lot of wheat beers in my life and I've had a lot of really good wheat beers that do slightly different things, but this is perfectly done. This is a three on three taste for me, I have to say. Yeah, and now we get into the interesting mouthfeel and the mouthfeel does require that we freshen up our drink a little bit just to Wanna freshen up the carbonation, carbonation levels in the beer. All right, my friend, let me know what you think. Cheers again. Mouthfeel cheers. So the first thing that I think uh, mm -hmm. is uh, this incredible silkiness, silkiness. and creaminess mm -hmm. that this beer has. Like it's, it's creamy, it's light, the carbonation really elevates all the flavor, leaves this nice layer on your tongue, like on your palate that is very delicate. And uh, it kind of like slides away like silk. It's absolutely delicious the way that uh, those flavors are in harmony and balance with uh, the aroma and the taste like you really get all of the elements and they just play perfectly together when you hear it's like they hearing do. like a, a you know great orchestra that is playing like a, yeah. like a music that works and then all the instruments are chiming in at the right time and as you said like as far as wheat beer go and again i've had like a few wheat beers too in my life this one here yeah. managed to do it in an incredible way so mouthfeel still i'm gonna stick with a three on three once you've reviewed the mouthfeel, we're officially halfway through our review and we're still at perfect beer territory, it's, which it's, is, yeah. it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> I have to agree with you, my friend, in the sense that it is, it has that creaminess, which is very, very, very pleasant, very inviting. It just washes over your mouth and your tongue in, in such a pleasant way. Um, there's the perfect amount of carbonation. You know, if you're, if you're thinking, let's say a, a one on 10 scale of carbonation, I would put this at maybe like an eight, an 8.5. It's very carbonated, but in a great way. And I love that. I love that it has that combination of creaminess and carbonation. As a mouthfeel, it's just perfect for me. And I find it doesn't get flat. It kind of, it keeps its carbonation and it holds that really well as you're drinking it. That's always been my experience with it as well. The gas doesn't escape too quickly. It's Perfect. It's a three on three mouth feel for me as well. It's got that perfect combination of creaminess and carbonation that I just love. And it's hoppy enough that you get that little bitterness tingling on your tongue too, which is a nice little addition. And all those three things together are the perfect mouth feel package. Perfect beer? Perfect beer rating is still going. I'm getting excited. I wonder if this is going to make it all the way through. But it's come to the finish. The finish has traditionally been a bit of a tough one. So, what do you think? So I'm gonna refresh in beer here, freshen it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this sip mm -hmm. to talk about the finish. Mm. I can't get past that mouthfeel, it's so good. I mean, it's I so could delicious, drink right? beer just for that. <laughs> I know, I know. That was one thing that really stood out to me about this beer was the mouthfeel. It's top notch. I can't think of any other, maybe, and I know I don't want to talk about Guinness too much, but maybe Guinness Stout is probably the only other beer I can think of where the mouthfeel was that inviting that makes you just want to go back in and take more and more sips. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that, but it's for as crazy as it sounds and for how completely different those two styles are, so, that's yeah. exactly the beer that I was thinking about too, because it has that creaminess it, for, for different yes. reasons, obviously. Exactly. But, but yeah. the way it, it just coats your palate, it, it's just so incredibly inviting for getting back into the glass again. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I will say that on the finish, uh, there are a little bit less elements compared to the rest of the experience. Not as far as the, not that that's a negative thing, but uh, it kind of like uh, fades like relatively fast. Uh, in, in a very pleasant way. You get that banana that yep. still lingers a little bit longer than everything else, at least for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The cloak character kind of like stays like a little bit and then disappears. The creaminess sticks around for quite a bit. Yeah. But then you have that hint. Uh, it's almost like a whisper of citrus. <laughs> it's, it's, there. it's not uh, like a whisper. It's playing with your brain, it's tricking you. I am torn here because I will say that normally I tend to like beers that have like a little bit more evolution in the finish, but in this case for the style, like yeah. it's it's so well, well done. done. Like I mean, I mean, I I can't 
I cannot give it a three. Really, oh, I was thinking was... maybe a two, <laughs> but I I gotta give it a three. So well done. I was on the edge of my seat. Like, is the perfect beer streak gonna continue? We've still got a perfect beer. You're sticking with the three. Okay. I feel some pressure now. All right. Mm. Wow, that mouthfeel. Okay. This beer is so unassuming and it doesn't try and trick you. And everything about it is so straightforward, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. There aren't any hidden flavors that you can identify. Everything's really clearly identifiable in it. And everything that I get in the aroma and everything that I get in the taste is there on the finish for me. Except I find the bitterness from the hops does not stick around. You get it a little bit in the aroma. You definitely get it on the taste. But in the finish, it's almost just like the sweetness sticks around. And there's a little bit of maybe if you're thinking in the realm of um, a sweet fruit or a honey. Honey, um, maybe yes. so, Yeah, uh, like a, a little mild though. I'm not saying a strong honey flavor. But if you're looking at a sweetness profile to, to describe it, like a creamy, light sweetness, like a honey, I get that that stays after the bitterness and after that banana is gone. It's so subtle to make you want to go back and take another sip. Before I make my final decision here to see if the perfect beer streak is staying alive, I'm going to take one more sip. Please, my friend, do. We've got to be thorough here at beer brackets. It's a three on three finish for me, too. And you know what's amazing about this? Like, it's not its not reinventing the wheel in any way, shape, or form. Well, again, maybe it, they invented the wheel. If they are the world's oldest brewery, they kind of did. <laughs> they kind of did, right? But like I said, there's nothing that stands out about this aside from the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is pretty spectacular and unique, but it's just so perfectly done. I Is this it? Have we got it? Because we're down to the overall now. If we've done threes all the way through, what's your overall rating? Uh, I'm gonna give it a one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and how can the overall experience be different? Like, I mean, it's like you said. Yeah. I think you, you described it perfectly. It's 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 so um, well done and basic in a way, but but so perfectly executed. It's just like yeah. the, the best thing I can think about is like a a, a, a classical music uh, tune that everybody knows, right? Like, but. When it's executed perfectly, even if you know it, you've heard it a thousand times, it just, yeah. you know, brings you to that place and it, you know, brings you uh, memories and, 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 and emotions because the, the execution is so perfect. And that's kind of yeah. like what, what this beer is. I mean, I guess they really invented the wheel and they yeah. kept it going for almost a thousand years. <laughs> you know what I compare this to? A margarita Napolitana style pizza. <laughs> That's what I compare yes. this to because it's the most simple form yes. of pizza that you can get. It's light, fluffy dough, simple dough, not a lot of additives. And then you just have a really nice tomato sauce, some fresh basil, some really nice mozzarella, preferably buffalo mozzarella, but some really nice mozzarella on top. And it's a simple, rustic, but every element is done perfectly and every element is fresh and delicious. And that's what I compare this to. It's a three on three experience for me. And my friend, it's a perfect beer. <laughs> we got the perfect beer. <laughs> we got a perfect beer. Ring that perfect beer alarm. We finally have another one. If only, if only we had that perfect beer alarm. Be amazing. What's this? <laughs> it's beer even alarm. better. It is the perfect beer gong. Alessandra, uh, will you do the honors of hitting the first ever perfect beer gong on the Beer Brackets channel, please? And for Weinst of Honor, Hefeweizen, perfect beer. Just let that echo, let that echo a little bit. Vibration goes into the world. Guys, this has been pretty epic. Not only do we have another delicious beer to add to our perfect beer hall of fame, I had a great time hanging out with you, Alessandro, reviewing this one. I've been wanting to have this one again for a little while. Again, guys, keep an eye open for our Inside the Brackets episode on what is a wheat beer. That'll be dropping really, really soon right after this review so you can learn all about what a wheat beer is and about that style. We'll go deep on that one. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you guys were able to find a, a wine, a wine Stefaner, or wine Stefan. It's a wine Stefan. 
Weinstefan. A Weinstefan. Wine Stefan. Hard to say, but so easy to drink. Hopefully you're able to find one yourself and crack it open and drink it along with us during the review. What did you think about it? Do you think it deserved the perfect beer gong? The first ever perfect beer gong? Do you agree with our rating on this? Do you think it should have scored a little lower? Scored a little higher, if possible? Let us know down below, guys. Cheers, and don't forget to close your beer brackets. Never forget.